Hey everyone. Uh, so today we're going to be playing into Dorinthia. Now you may be wondering if Dorinthia is actually a good hero now, and the answer is kind of complicated, but it's actually sort of yes. Glistening Steel Blade is a new card that was given to us. It has go again, and whenever a Dawn Blade hits, uh, it actually gains a counter. So it's a really crazy snowball card you have to worry about now. So we're playing a Dorinthia today. We're going to be on the mid-range pistol build. We're bringing in all of our defense reaction sideboarding our cards like a race face and some of the more aggressive boost cards and also a lot of extra items we don't need because we really need block values into Dorinthia. So our turn one's actually a really strong high roll basically. We get to arsenal and defense reaction, load our counters and also tutor for plasma purifier. And that's the main reason why we're going first is to set up a defense reaction arsenal, hopefully hit a pistol item. And that's pretty much like the main way to play the deck. Now, if any of you are pretty unfamiliar with Dorinthia or maybe forgot how the deck works, there's a really good video I can link them. I'll link in the description that I find really helpful when playing into the stack. Although a lot of the lines have changed now because of cards like run through and a lot of the extra go against you can throw on top of Don Blade now, which didn't really exist before. But here we see a pretty standard old Zorinthia line where it's Warriors Valor Red into Don Blade, which is a surprisingly effective hand that can threaten a lot of damage as well as a Don Blade counter. However, we are looking at Induction Chamber in our hand, so we're considering taking damage this turn to set up the Induction Chamber. We really feel comfortable blocking for exact values on Dawnblade because of the defense reaction on Arsenal, and we let the first one go through because blocking six on the six Dawnblade just felt a little too tight. However, they do get a really good line here where they get singing into a plus three which the singing gives plus one itself. So this goes exactly one over, which gives them a Dawn Blade counter. Now I'm considering using the defense reaction arsenal to stop the plus one counter this turn, but to use a defense reaction now, when there's not really any super relevant on hits going on, it didn't really feel worth it to me. And we're just fine, hopefully over blocking on the next stand to get rid of the Dawn Blade counter. But as long as Dawn Blade maybe has one into a deck like this, we feel pretty okay. A big reason why is because dash pretty much is all three blocks outside of the pistol item. So you're pretty comfortable blocking 12, which unless if they have 20, there's a really hard thing for them to get around. So our turn is just simply loading a counter, uh, playing the other induction chamber and passing. So we have a pretty good setup now. And here we see a hand that we're just comfortable kind of like blocking for 12 with at some point, either all on one Don Blade swing or across multiple in one turn. If Don Blade comes in for three with no natural go again, we're pretty comfortable saying no blocks. Although there are a lot of cards now that have added go again in the reaction phase, like run through is probably the best one because then the next down blade comes in for five and it's threatening to counter so here we see glistening so this is the turn where we want to block out with everything uh if we can block out all three glistenings we're probably going to win although we do have to consider the possibility of twinning um mainly because the sword already has go again so while it may feel intuitive to block 12 on this if they do play a twinning they'll have another card in hand to pitch to swing the down blade and then that down blade comes in for four so we're leaving behind another three block in hand so that we can block down with the armor and we see exactly what we anticipated now my opponent was a little bit confused on how bracers worked but um the dawn blade comes in for four not that it would have mattered because even if it came in for um five we would have been able to block with command and conquer as well as a piece of armor which is exactly what we're going to do so we played around that perfectly i was really concerned about twinning being a possibility so blocking for nine felt fine there um it would take a few cards to get over and then even then, um, if they did go all in and use the last two cards to try to get over the defenses on the first swing, we we're feeling really comfortable with the defense reaction arsenal. Now, actually, we're not running unmovable, mainly because I've adjusted the list a little bit, expecting a lot of uh, linear aggro decks such as the Rune Blades and Phi. So instead of unmovable in the deck, we're running that all you got. Now, if you're expecting Dorinthia or you really want to hedge for that matchup as well as uh, protect yourself against Guardians, I think you bring Red Immovable back in. And then this matchup is probably a slam dunk in your favor. Defense reactions and Arsenal are the best way to attack Dorinthia, basically, or more like prevent what she does because you'll actually deny the reprise trigger, which is a really big deal into Dorinthia. Having no reprise uh, pretty much makes a lot of our cards worthless, cards like Iron Song response are actually cannot buff the weapon at all. They can only buff it on the reprise trigger if you block to the card from hand. It doesn't mean uh, we're sending on two defense reactions, but we're not going to pitch it because these are pretty precious in this matchup because you can get you can buy yourself out of a lot of bad blocks with it. The main reason why is because Dorinthia will make blocking really difficult for you if you don't have defense reactions. If they swing with the Dawn Blade for three and you block for three, there's normally a plus effect. And then the first one hits, it'll get go again. It can swing twice. And then 
you know, they'll also push on the second one as well. So in the Dorinthia, you either want to overblock, depending on the amount of cards in their hand, or you want to say no blocks at all and deny a lot of damage off the reprice triggers, or uh, you want to block for exact values if you have defense reactions. It's really difficult um, to read all the hands, but our turn is just going to be pushing damage. We still want to be consistently doing damage. We got lucky and got to set up a lot of items very early. We see spoils. Uh, they do have three cards available, so I'm just going to block for a close to exact amount of value and then make a judgment call based on what I see here. If we had no defense reactions, I'd probably play this hand a bit differently. I would probably block with nine cards, or sorry, nine defense, and probably keep a blue. And if they find a way to go over it, we at least have a three block for the second Dawn Blade. Or um, if the turn ends there, we can just keep the blue and keep on pistoling our opponent down. Now our opponent is running Valiant Dynamos, which does actually make it pretty difficult. They're going to be getting one point of value out of them every single turn which in a really grindy matchup like Dash may actually cause some problems. Now we see another singing. So at this point, you want to be keeping track of what the Dorinthia has played. Once the last singing is gone, you feel really comfortable making risky blocks. In the early game, making risky blocks is pretty difficult, mostly because you haven't seen all of the threats yet. But once all the glistenings are gone, once all the singing steel blades are gone, once the steel blade supremacies are gone, you're really in a, in a good spot at that point. Now we get to fade for scene to stop this really uh, go tall turn uh, with the singing and the out for blood. And we see that all you got on top of the deck. And we're just going to prioritize defense reactions mainly because of that reason. We block um, an appropriate amount of damage on Dawn Blade. Our opponent dumps her whole hand to try to go over to get uh, a second Dawn Blade swing in. And then we can just simply uh, shut it down with a defense reaction so this one's pretty simple it's just going to be shooting the pistol some more times nothing super crazy here going on and that's pretty much gonna be the bulk of our turns there are a few pivot turns this game although they're probably less than ideal we didn't really get to push the damage ceiling with high octane it was just it seemed like the appropriate time to do so it may seem like we're not doing enough but considering we're pushing you know about six damage a turn with a blue it's actually pretty insane um, and we're going to be trying to keep one blue a turn we can keep red attacks, although it's probably less beneficial for us at this point in the game, considering the damage output of our pistol items. Now we see here um, a dominated Dawn Blade, which would normally cause issues as it comes in for six. But luckily for us, we have Foundry Heart plus the defense reaction in our arsenal. And we're going to play the defensive reaction in our arsenal first, mainly because we don't want to trigger reprise. So between the one in our hand, and the one in our arsenal, the one in our hand is way worse because that could trigger something like Iron Song Response, or it could trigger Singing Steel Blade, a lot of other things, Overpower, Route. So there's a lot of issues with playing the one in hand. So we're, there's no reason not to play the one in Arsenal and then Arsenal another defense reaction on our turn. So like always, we're going to be pitching a bunch of blues. Now we actually get pretty lucky because our opponent didn't really um, have any cards that could push damage without a reprise trigger. We get to keep a full hand here, which is pretty crazy. And so now there's a consideration to actually pitch the, that all you got as resources here to really start to maximize damage. We're also doing a really good job of denying our opponent Valiant Dynamo triggers, which is pretty important because that will end up, you know, swinging a lot of points of value throughout the game. So our opponent is blocking, which normally we would have a problem with, but as a Dorinthia player, hand gets lower it becomes a little bit easier to block as they have less cards there's less lines to worry about things like that and so here we go i'm pitching the that all you got is just simply resources to push more damage if our opponent blocks down and they only keep a few card hand if it's only like two cards then there's obviously pretty much almost zero tricks they can pull off that would surprise us and now we have a moderately more aggressive hand here we actually have some red threats in hand we see this turn so now you know there's a few there's a few questions we have to ask right because it's steel blade supremacy there's any way to let it even hit once at all there is a pretty big issue as they'll get to draw a card and that can maybe maximize a lot of damage on this turn but they also haven't presented a way to give it go again there is possibly a chance of something like a glint in arsenal so we're just trying to think about how to block this and we're actually trying to figure out the line where we can actually optimize the amount of damage based on what cards we keep. We could have kept two blues and I just gave up trying to do math at that point. But I think that based on the amount of resources that actually keeping the blue and the red is probably better as a pistol only comes in for three and maybe we could have gotten one extra point of damage out of keeping two blues. But the problem is we would pretty much be out of counters at that point. And this way we can actually 
keep a lot of counters on all of our things and then actually still super hit for five, which is a lot more efficient. So I'm just gonna see how our opponent blocks with this. Once our opponent starts going into a lower life total range, it actually gets really, really good for us, mostly because of the efficiency of the pistol items. It'll be really easy to start ripping cards out of our opponent's hand, and that will cause a lot of issues for our opponent and not for us. And as we rip more cards from Dorinthia, the deck becomes less and less powerful. Dorinthia functions really good on five card hands and doesn't function very well on two card hands. Although the damage output can be good, there's no surprises um, in terms of combat tricks, which is really where Dorinthia wants to be at. So here we're going to see what our opponent's going to do. So we see another one of the Steel Blade turns. So we are on full alert here. We're getting ready to block out with basically the whole hand. Um, ideally, we would block out with everything except the blue and return some damage, although we are fine foregoing six damage to prevent what would be a lot more than six on our opponent's side. But our life total is also pretty comfortable. And here we see, <laughs> we also see Supremacy. So this is this is the turn, right? And we're very fortunate to have a defense reaction arsenal. So we're gonna block, we're gonna overblock here and see what happens. We see a 20. So the Don Blade gets to come in again, which uh, is a problem. And we see our opponent crack courage to swing the Don Blade for free. So there's a few things that could happen here, right? If they have um if they have Iron Song response, the Don Blade comes in for five and the Iron Song response takes it to eight which would be exactly enough over our three block in hand as well as our defense reaction arsenal. So I am now actually considering a line where I block with Foundry Heart as well as the blue card in hand. And that way, if it is Iron Song response, we at least get to um, stop the card. But now there's another thing I'm concerning as well where um, I think probably the better line would have been to block with the Foundry Heart and then play the Sink Below. The main reason why is because at that point there's no Reprise Trigger and there's no card in the deck besides in the Swing that would possibly give it plus three um, or any buff at all with no Reprise Trigger. So I think that like I think there was probably a better line there where I didn't have to burn two cards and I probably could have blocked with Foundry Heart and then the Sink Below, and then that way I at least get to return six damage on my on my end. But also this hand isn't bad either in terms of the play line, mainly because we get to preserve Foundry Heart and preserving armor in this matchup is really important, especially with dominated effects or wanting to block Dawn Blade with no cards. So you deny reprise triggers. Both of those are extremely important. And now this is a hand we draw into. If we get to choose what cards we'd like to keep, um, I think all of them can be pretty decent. Although I think ideally we would want to block with everything down to high octane. If we have the chance, I think that would probably be the best course of action. We see another Supremacy. Now, while this may seem oppressive on the opponent's side, you have to look at the life totals here. Where we've actually taken very little damage. And then the other thing too, is we can count their graveyard and pretty much all their threats are gone. I believe we've seen two 20s at this point. We've seen multiple Supremacies. We've seen multiple uh, singing Steel Blades. So we're actually like in a really, really comfortable spot here. And we don't have Tekla Core, so blocking down to just uh, Spark and getting Core out wasn't an option here. So I wanted to block for nine. Um, however, if our opponent pushes over, there is an issue though, because it means that the next Dawn Blade will hit, mainly because um, we only have four block on the table. Skull Cap is off and Dawn Blade would come in for five at the very least. Could be six if they get a uh, point of value into Bracers. The second Dawn Blade hitting with Supremacy is less problematic mainly because the extra card draw doesn't mean anything if the sword can't attack again. Unless if they have a way to use 20 in that same turn, the extra swing won't actually matter. And so drawing the card off the supremacy here doesn't actually do that much besides maybe give them a better arsenal. Despite our opponent digging kind of hard, they weren't able to find enough to go over. So that puts us in a good spot where we can just arsenal high octane and pass. With high octane and arsenal, we're really looking to find our pivot turn here. Our opponent's at 23, and we ideally would want another Purifier on the table. But at this point, with a relatively decent hand, we can actually get there. Now, here we see a really good hand to go off with. Three blues, a high octane. And so now, now it starts to change a little bit where um, before I wouldn't care about keeping cards. I kind of do want to keep cards. And we're at 33. And sometimes if it means that we're going to be swinging tempo in our favor for the rest of the game, it is okay to give Dawn Blade a counter because if our opponent blocks out their next hand, they can't swing Dawn Blade anyway. So it doesn't matter if you give the plus one. So here, that's where we're considering it. 
And so we're going to take all of it. I mean, it is a little bit on the more aggressive side of a Warrior's Valor turn. So we're taking a lot of damage here, but notice the amount of cards that we deny from our opponent in terms of just not blocking. So when you actually need to pivot, Dorinthia won't do that much. I mean, this is definitely the more aggressive Dorinthia turn because Warrior's Valor was kind of balanced around being able to block it out and deny the second swing. But if you just say no blocks and Warrior Valor turns, you actually take a surprising amount of damage. But with the current circumstances and our life total, we're actually pretty okay with it. So you'll see there, like our opponent had three cards that they just didn't use there, which is um part of the upside to when you want to no block on Dorinthia. Sometimes a lot of the cards are actually pretty worthless. Now we get super unlucky here and we hit Command and Conquer, which is a non-boost attack and doesn't really do anything for us. So the power level of our turn just like plummeted off of a cliff. Now we do boost our blue zero to 60, which is like really horrible. Doesn't really do that much, only comes in for two, but it at least does damage here. And we can probably pistol out one time as well as still use command and conquer. And then we can arsenal the other high octane and hopefully try again. So we'll see how our opponent responds to this. Now we do have Goliath Gauntlet. I opted to use Goliath Gauntlet here, although I don't think it was correct. I think our opponent would have um, used Crown of Providence anyway to block the Command and Conquer. So I don't think that there was much of a reason to use Goliath Gauntlet, which is what we're going to do this turn. And I think we could have just played the first Command and Conquer without um, using Gauntlet and still gotten the same effect. The other reason I wanted to do it, though, is that if my opponent decides to just use Crown to cycle the Arsenal to protect it from Command and Conquer, they are taking six here, which puts them to nine, which given we have another high octane probably means that even if we say no blocks in the next hand we're probably in lead to win the game at this point so i'm gonna see how my opponent decides to respond to this now they're aware of their life total as well and so they decide to use their equipment value now and so while the arsenal is protected anyway and they still get a five card hand they do mitigate some of the damage that they would take now our next hand once again, almost looks good enough for a high octane turn, but just one thing is missing here. Um, the Plasma Purifier is a card we would like to set up on a turn before and then um, go off of the high octane. But here's the only problem. Our opponent has five cards. I don't really see a world where we block with only two cards here on the Dawn Blade and hope to play the Plasma Purifier and we don't just get completely blown out. Our opponent's at 12 and so Red Throttle is half of their life total and we have more than enough resources to do that. So I am considering to saying no box here, not because our hand is particularly strong, but because our opponent's low enough. And Dorinthia with five cards is just a losing battle, especially the Dawnblade counter if we decide to block now. So I'm really risking it here. And you can see me going back and forth on that decision. I still don't know what the correct choice would have been. I think that if we block six, we just get absolutely blown out. I think Dawnblade gets another counter and we take a bunch of damage. We get to set up Plasma Purifier, and then the next turn probably secures lethal, but we have to be really careful if we're gonna say no blocks here. Um, it's a pretty pretty big issue. We say no blocks, our opponent does an out for blood, um, as well as an overpower, but you'll see here, saying no blocks actually mitigated a ton of damage. Not that I'm not, not that I'm sure if it was correct or not, but that is important to know. Like overpower only does a couple damage without the reprise trigger. That's a really big difference. We also see um, Iron Song response from our opponent being pitched there, which is now a worthless card when we say no blocks. Dawnblade does have two counters. Our opponent has five cards and 12 health. Here we're getting that all you got, which under other circumstances would be kind of a dud card, but it at least does pitch for resources here, which is pretty much all we care about. We get lucky we hit a mech card on our boost, even though we are still in first cycle. So we actually don't know what the pitch stack is. Um, that is something to keep in mind. If you really want to be sure about your high octane turns, you can actually pitch stack appropriately so you know that all of your boosts will be mech cards. And now I'm considering what I want to do. I would either rather boost with the T-Bone or if I want to pitch it for resources. And pitching it for resources is the correct option here. So we get to activate Purifier. And now we just get to start ripping cards from our opponent. And so we're just going to play the Purifier and pass. Turn could have been a lot better, although there was just some issues, like we said. Um, but uh, putting our opponent on three cards, us at 12 life, and now us with two purifiers and our opponents at six means that we're probably ripping a ton of cards from them. Now, our opponent plays a Dawnblade with no go again. And so I just say reactions here because we don't want to play a defense reaction until our opponent plays a reaction that gives a go again. They don't have bolters. 
So they swing the Dawn Blade. Make sure that you ask them for reactions first. And if they say no reactions, you can say no defense reactions and the turn ends. It feels awkward leaving the Dawn Blade with two counters, but assuming that there's nothing else from our opponent and the card doesn't have go again, we want to wait to see what they have. So now we see the run through. And with one card left from our opponent, even though it could be Iron Song response, we at least have block damage on the back end. But this is only for five. Um, so we're going to overblock here for seven as a reaction. And so we, we obviously wanted to wait for that first. If our opponent doesn't have a way to give a go again, then we can just simply pass here. We take five and the Dawn Blade keeps the counter, but they don't get the swing twice because there was no reaction if they play to give a go again. So there's no reason to overextend your defense reactions there until you see a go again card from Dorinthia. And then once we saw the go again card, that's when we were comfortable going in on it. Now keeping the blue here is pretty much exactly what we want to do. Um, now, I decided to boost first. I'm not sure if this was correct. The main reason why, so the reason why I boosted here was um, what I wanted to do was so I wanted to load the pistol, right? I wanted to play the red zero, to, uh, the red zipper hit, boosting it. I then want to activate Foundry Heart, get two resources, and then shoot the pistol twice. So that was that was the main goal of that turn. Um, now it doesn't pan out in either way here, and using Achilles Accelerator feels awkward, but it was still a calculated risk here because there's really nothing else that card is doing right now. Um, so I pay into Foundry Heart, we get unlucky, we hit our last Command and Conquer. So we only get one resource back, which just means we're gonna shoot the pistol for three instead of shooting it twice for two. Um, but the upside here is that our opponent doesn't have any more armor value left and they are at three. So we do get a full card from them. We're still at 12. Dawn Blade doesn't have a counter. And so on this next turn, we're pretty comfortable to say no blocks here and seeing what happens. Because with two purifiers out, as long as we're drawing blues here, we're going to be in a spot where we're probably going to command the rest of the game. And that's a really nice place to be in. It's probably worth noting though that oddly enough, like we're actually kind of fatiguing ourselves here, blocking so much on Dawn Blade swings, but eventually we're going to hit an all blue pitch stack and Dorenthi is going to run out of threats. It's just the way the deck works. The Dawn Blade doesn't really present much on its own. It needs to be paired um, along with reactions and non-attack actions that do something. Now here I block with the armor because I'm counting up and I can block out the Dawn Blade with the that all you got in Arsenal since the Dawn Blade comes in for four. Now, once again, we're not going to play that until we hear reactions from the Dorinthia player on whether or not the card has go again. And I'm waiting. <laughs> and my opponent says no reaction. So that tells us they didn't have a way to give it go again. Um, so it may seem like we waste an armor block there, but we were setting up for possibly a run through or a glint and Getting them to play Glint without drawing a card is probably one of the best outplays you can do into Dorinthia. It's just a massive, massive um, lead on your end. And now they don't have Dynamo online this turn. So now Pistol gets to come in for four multiple times. And then as we get lower in the hand, it's going to rip a card and that's going to start ripping two cards because we're going to leak one every single time. So on this next shot, they go to one. And then on the next shot, they're going to have to block with two cards. And then we just have the game at that point. So here my, my opponent understands what's happening and they just opt to concede. So that's how I played the matchup. Once again, if you would like to run a movable here, I think you definitely just lock out the game even harder. Um, just denying any sort of reprise effect by just putting in your arsenal is all you have to do to win the game. So hopefully this was helpful. Thanks for watching.